I have the privilege to introduce uh, a very good friend of mine. Um, he has spoken uh, once or twice before, so he's a little nervous. So it would be really great if you could um, help him feel encouraged. Uh, he has a lot of great stories. This has been over a year in coming. I've been working very hard to get Chris Lama up here, telling you all about all the amazing things that you need to know about in life. So Chris, thank you. <laughs> The guy stomped up the steps into the subway station and you knew immediately that he was in a rush. You could hear it from the pacing of his steps. And as he realized that he didn't have enough money in the card that he needed to use at the subway station, he walked up to the bank of those machines that you use to pay and add more money to the card. And yet he was waiting behind four or five different people that were all trying to figure it out. And you could tell he was annoyed, not by looking at him, but by listening as he tapped his foot, as he breathed ever so loudly. And you knew he was annoyed as the people were trying to figure out, do I push the button first or do I put the money in first or do I slide the card in? And he was annoyed. But he got up there and he got his card and he rushed over to the turnstile, ran it through, got to the other end of it and got to the escalator. You know, the kind where the escalator goes all the way down and you're supposed to stand on the right and walk on the left. And yet he saw people on both sides and was like, this isn't going to do. And so he took the steps, even though it was 200 steps all the way down into the part where the trains come by. He took them all the way, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, all the way down. Moving faster than the escalator, he got to the bottom and went over to the train and noticed that the train was already there. And so he stepped into the train car, perfect timing, he thought, and he got on the train and all he needed to do was wait for the doors to close and for it to take off and it didn't. And he's sitting there waiting like, what's going on? He had somewhere to be. He was focused on himself and not worried about anything else. And as people filled in the car, he kept waiting and he started tapping his foot and he started breathing. <sighs> He was annoyed. There was an older man who was walking up to the train. Our business friend wasn't really paying attention to him, but as the older man got to the train door and was getting onto the train, something happened. We don't know exactly what, except that his foot slipped in between the train and he got stuck. And thankfully, one of the attendants at the station noticed. And so he yelled to the front where the, where the guy was, right, that drives the train, and he yelled and said, stop the train. And the train stopped, or didn't take off, and our business friend was quite pissed. I gotta wait more? I got somewhere to be, and so he starts looking at his watch and he's worried all about it. And yet, they organized a whole group of people to get out of the train. Oh, he thought, this is just gonna make me even later. I believe the world is filled with impatient people. We'll come back to that story in a second, but let me tell you about a place that I go to every single year. Been going for 10 years. I take my wife and our two kids. Started the first year we went to Cabo San Lucas was on my honeymoon with my wife. And so we went and I love Cabo. I mean, it's fantastic. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. We have this pool at our place. It's one of the only two five-star resorts in the whole area. And they have this pool that is just right in front of the beach. And so you get in the pool, you swim to the edge, you lay your arms over the edge. The ocean is hitting the sand right in front of you. It is so peaceful. And we go and we rest there every year. Take it easy and do nothing. And last year, while I was laying on the edge of that pool, hanging out, listening to the ocean, I heard kids playing off in the corner of the pool. Kids, you know, just hanging around playing. And I heard one of them say, Dad, come on, get in the pool. Dad didn't get in the pool. I saw the other kids playing. I turned and looked. The mother had gotten into the pool. Now mom and two kids were playing. And you'd hear the other kid, Dad, get in the pool. And Dad would be like, yeah, one second. Ten more minutes. Kids, Dad, come on, get in the pool. Mother followed along. Honey, why don't you get in the pool? Yeah, one second. Daddy's working. 
You take a look and there, under the umbrella, sitting on the edge of the pool on a chair, was a guy just punching away at his phone, working away. I don't know why you'd go to Cabo to work, but that's what he was doing. I believe the world is filled with people who are preoccupied with technology. I don't know about you, but he's not the only jerk in the world. He's not the only dad that ends up missing out on key moments when he could be hanging out with family. Because if you come into our house, if you had a camera in our house, in our living room, looking out over the dining room, there'd be many a night where you'd see my wife sitting across from me and our two kids at the table, and there we are ready for dinner. And the kids just want dad to ask, hey, how was your day? What'd you learn? What'd you do? Tell me about it. And yet dad is staring at his phone. I wonder if I got that email back. I wonder if they've replied. Oh, look, someone's favoriting my tweet and missing the opportunity at the table. I believe that technology can rob us of relationship. We don't catch it right away, right? Because you get a phone and you think, this is powerful. In fact, if you're carrying a smartphone with you, the reality is that your smartphone is more powerful than any computer that we've ever had up until 1995. And you're carrying it in your pocket. It's like a mini supercomputer in your pocket. And you bring it out and you start using it. And then you realize, this thing is attached to me. I'm using it all the time. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, probably not, it's only just me, but sometimes I, I use an iPhone and so I will, to save power, I'll start killing the apps, right? Because I double click and I see all the things and I start swiping them to kill all the apps. And the moment I just finish killing all the apps, I get back to the home screen and then I open up one of the same apps I just killed. It's not because I intended to, it's not because I thought it through. I just think, let's get rid of all these apps. And I'm like, oh wait, I just got rid of Twitter, let me click it back on. And I'm stuck right back where I started. This technology that was supposed to assist, this technology that was sold to us as a way to help and make it available to us so we could connect with one another, it was an awesome idea. And I believe that some ideas are incredibly powerful. A year ago, the ALS Foundation raised a million dollars around this time. I don't know if you've caught it recently, but this month they raised four million, not one million. Four times as much revenue has come in in donations because people started taking videos and pictures of themselves dousing themselves with ice in some sort of ice bucket challenge that's supposed to say either you take the challenge or you challenge others and then they either donate $10 or $100. I don't know all the rules, but I can tell you this. The notion, the idea of being connected and being able to share those pictures and those videos to everybody, that's a powerful idea. And it's having impact. But I believe that the only thing bigger and better than a big idea is the team of people that can assemble to make that idea a reality. The only thing bigger than a big idea is the team, the group of people that make it happen. Years ago, I started a little startup and we worked together to start building some technology. In those days, it was pretty nifty technology. It was an e-commerce site, but in 1998, trying to connect to authorize.net was a total pain in the butt. We spent 100,000 in nine months. You can do now with a WooCommerce extension in nine minutes. But we built an entire solution that would go from the order, collecting the order, digitizing that order in XML, sending it off to a partner in Southern California that would automatically put it into, I'm not joking, it would come in through a computer, but it would connect to this little toaster machine and the toaster machine, the computer would light up and tell you what phone you needed. And then you'd go, someone would go and grab the phone and put it, unpack it, take the phone, put it in the toaster. The toaster had a robotic hand. And it would go ahead and punch in all the information, activate the phone, and even program numbers into it. 
And then the computer would ding and the guy would take it out, put it back in the box, and, sh and print out the label that would come on the computer and ship it. From the time businesses would buy the phone until the time it was shipped was less than 120 minutes. Less than two hours. It was incredible. At the time, the, the internet providers, or the, particularly the cellular providers, there was no consistency across the country. That was an FCC thing that they had done on purpose. And so they had sold the different blocks of the wavelengths to different carriers. So you didn't have one carrier across the country. And that allowed us to create this web-based solution and do some little arbitrage to say, we have the unified solution, even though there are carriers across the country and you have to figure out your policies and your plans across all of it. We can do it via this one website. So we built this B2B exchange. We built all this technology. All of that was interesting. It was really cool when you saw your company name in a list with all these other big names. And we were the only American Express provider that was literally 10 people. And we built this company and we'd done this stuff and we built all this amazing technology. And then they came by and said, we'd like to hire you out of your team. We'd like you to come work for us. And the company came and said, I'll pay you two, three million dollars to do it. And I said, nope, I have a team. And so they said, fine, we'll just, we'll buy your whole company. So we sold the company for $10 million. To let you know, when I was about 27 or 28, I'd, I'd been in a previous startup and we'd sold that company as well, but it wasn't mine. I wasn't an officer. I didn't get a lot out of it. So I had made a decision when I was 28 that I wanted to sell my first own company by the time I was 30. And we sold that company three months before I was 30 and we sold it for $10 million. And half that money went back to the investors. The other half came to our business. I took a big chunk of it. I was rich. I believe most of us have dreams that revolve around money. Not just because money is awesome, but because of all the things we tell ourselves that money could do. And here's what happened. Stepped into the new company. Well, remember, I have a belief that even more important than the idea is the team that materializes it. And I had negotiated so they had to buy my whole team and they had to put the entire team to work in the new company. So everybody had a job, which was awesome for everybody. And I got there into this new job. I had to help them raise money and we raised another $150 million for the new bigger company. And as we did that, we diluted my stock. That's what happens when you work through that kind of stuff. My 3.5 million turned into $30,000 within two years. Thank God I hadn't spent any of it because it was all paper. But I learned a more important lesson right when I was turning 30. And it was this, I woke up the next morning after we had signed all the paperwork, after I was officially rich, I woke up the next morning and I went outside. I don't remember if it was to get the paper or to let the dog out or what it was, but I went outside and you know what I noticed? There was no parade. <laughs> Nothing fell from the sky. There was no glitter. There were no streamers. There was no cameramen like, what are you going to do now? I was going to go to Disneyland. There was no trip to Disneyland. I had turned 30. I was rich. I'd sold my own company. And there was absolutely nothing on the other end of it. And I had made a set of trade-offs. I had decided that nothing was more important than this goal of selling a company. And so, Friends had called, hey, do you want to go out? You want to hang out? Let's go to the movies. No, I can't. I'm working. Hey, we're going to have this birthday party today. You want to come by? No, I can't. I'm working. And I started making trade-offs because I thought, this is it. I sold the company. I was rich on paper. And there was no parade. And I couldn't go back and reclaim any of that time. I couldn't go back and actually make any of that time come back in such a way that I could build and choose for relationships. And eventually that money disappeared because it was on paper and we diluted it and it was the nature of how you raise money and what happens in companies. And I thought, you know, this technology thing isn't all that it's cracked up to be. I'm investing day in and day out, staring at a screen, and as I'm looking at it, and I'm learning these things, and I'm studying, and I'm spending all night up investing my life in this technology for the sake of the technology and for the sake of a dream, and it has let me down. I am so thankful 
for those lessons up until 30. I'm so thankful because I caught it early. I could have, there are people that may spend until they're 40, 50, 60, or 70 pursuing that same kind of dream and believing that there's a payday out there and that when the payday comes, everything's going to be better. And they've made trade-offs and the family is sitting in the pool saying, dad, come hang out. And yet what's happening is saying, nope, dad's working. There are nights when you walk into our living room or our family room and you see us at the dinner table and dad's looking at his phone. But there are also nights now where you'll catch that the phone is left in the office. And on date night when I take my wife out, the phone's left in the car. And my general take is, you know what? It'll be there when I get back. It'll be there when I get back. I believe that relationships are far more important than the technology that suggests it will help connect us. I believe that relationships are more important than most things. And I believe that WordPress is more powerful than just for blogging. There are all sorts of people that will tell you that WordPress is an incredible platform for blogging. And it is. It does amazing things with blogs. I have a blog. I write uh, that blog all the time and people come by and read it and I go, this is so cool because it's so easy to sit down and write. But the reason it's easy for me with WordPress is because I've been using WordPress for a long time, since 2005 when it was a blue header, a couple links on the top and you didn't have many choices to make. Do you remember those days? The good old days? Four or five choices at the top of the browser. You're like, look, one, two, write, click. Okay, now I know what I want to do. Try and do that today, right? Load up a screen and say, here, write a post. And they're like, I have 42 options. What am I supposed to click on? Well, duh, posts. I, what's a post? I, I, seriously, I'm not joking. I met with a customer and we were talking and, and uh, I said, well, now you probably want to slide on the website, but I got to tell you, I'm not a big fan of sliders. He's like, I love burgers. I'm like, what? Oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, I, I interacted with the customer and when I said, are you going to want it responsive? And they're like, well, yeah. I, like if people come and click, I want it to do stuff. And I'm like, no, I, yeah, you want it respond? Like, yeah, okay. I get it. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. We use lingo and we forget but there are still people who look at what we're doing and look at the tools we're using and they're still confused. And the choices have proliferated to the point where now we're like, this is complicated. It's easy for me because I've noticed the, gra the, the change gradually. I've gotten introduced to each little change in a small micro moment that I can get through and accept. But to someone who goes from not seeing anything to suddenly seeing all the choices, sometimes they get confused and what we do for them is magic. No, I believe that WordPress is far more powerful than a blog or an engine for a blog. And you're thinking, he's about to tell us that it's also great for websites, it's also great for applications, but that's not what I want to tell you. She came into our home about an hour or two before dinner because that's the way we like to do it at our house. She came over and she was there to hang out. And so she came and we sat down and we were preparing the food. We gave her an assignment. We had an assignment and we were working on the assignments when she looks up and she's like, hey, I heard that you can help me with my business. And I said, sure. Yeah, tell me, tell me about your business. See, when people ask what I do, right? Normally I tell them, well, my name's Chris Sama. I, I, I'm a software guy. Uh, if they push in a little further, I might say, well, I'm the VP of software engineering at a company called Emphasis. It does vertical market enterprise software. And they're like, yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> in their mind, they just think he's the tech guy who can fix my printer. So for the longest time on Facebook, I had to write, I don't fix printers, right? Because I didn't want my neighbors to be like, oh, the, the guy next door, he can come fix. I literally had a neighbor that would come over like three, three times a year and be like, how do I fix the printer? I'm like, I buy a new one. I don't know if you've noticed this, but printers have gotten so cheap that it's actually cheaper every two years to buy a new printer with the ink that comes with it in that moment because they seem to want to change the cartridges all the time. I just buy a printer and then I buy a whole bunch of ink and then I'm like, okay, when the ink runs out, we just buy a new printer. 
that's not the point. The point is that the neighbors are like, oh, he fixes printers. I'm like, no, no, I, I do software stuff. And, and so she was there and she's like, I'd heard you do software stuff and you can help me with my business. I'm like, yeah. For the last 10, 15 years, I've been coaching companies and helping them on the side. I, eventually, I, I worked in five startups. Eventually, I got married and then I had a child and my wife was smart enough that she didn't actually ask me to quit startups when we got married. She was way too smart. She's also a little tricky. <laughs> she waited until I was holding our baby as I'm holding our girl and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. She's like, great. I would like to talk to you about leaving startups and I was like, what? So like, yeah, I'd like you, you know, I want you to get a job where it's stable for years. And so I joined a company called Emphasis and I've been there eight and a half years. And it's not because the job's amazing, though it's been great. It's not because my boss is amazing, though he's been fantastic. It's because my wife is amazing. And when she says, I want you to do something, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I do this enterprise thing, but on the Weekends, on the evenings, and the afternoons, I write a blog and hang out with WordPress people. And on the weekends and sometimes the evenings, I'll coach companies. And so she came over. She wanted help. And she had figured out everything about her business. I mean, you listen to her and she's like, I'm, I'm so confused. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. But when you start asking questions, do you know what your supplies are going to cost? Do you know what, what are you going to need other people? Do you have a place? Are you going to need to rent space? Oh, I already have the place. I already have this. I already know this. I have this. And I'm like, I'm confused. What do you need? I don't know how to do the marketing and get the word out thing and I, I need a website. And to her, she had just spoken a foreign language. To her, the things we do were magic. She had no clue how to do it. I'm like, well, yeah, that's easy. That's the easiest part. I mean, you've done all the hard work. So we, we went, you know, finished dinner, went over to the computer and started working on some stuff. And within a couple days, she had a website. And for her, all she needed was that website to feel legitimate. For her, when the phone call came in and she said, yeah, I'm doing this, and they said, oh, do you have a website? Yeah, and she gave me the URL. That was it for her. She felt like, I have made it. I got an email from her just a couple days ago. She's been running her business now for five years. And it was a really nice email that basically said, thank you, I could not have fulfilled my dreams without that night where you also put me to work making the salad. I was like, well, we gotta work for our keep. Um, she's living her dream because of WordPress. A buddy of mine that called me up, I met him at a church conference in Atlanta and he was trying to sell some software for churches and I walked up to him and I said, this looks a lot like another product that I knew was out there but it was mostly for bands and artists and I said, this looks like, and he's like, yeah, that's, I'm just reselling it. And I said, why don't you build your own platform for this? He said, it'd be great, but I talked to some folks and they said it'd be a million dollars. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get help from those guys. <laughs> so we started talking, we started building a, a relationship and over time, the more we talked, the more he's like, yeah, you know this stuff. I'm like, I've been building online hosted software for 20 years, yeah, I know this stuff. And it's not a million dollars. He's like, calls me up one day, Chris, I talked to these guys. They're so much smarter. They totally get it. And by him, smarter, he meant smarter than the first group, not smarter than me, just so we're clear. And so he calls and he's like, they're so good. It's only gonna cost me $120,000. I'm like, it's not $120,000. So I sat at the computer one weekend and I started building out the core of what he needed, right? four, five, six different custom post types and then skinning the admin and then got it to a place where I called him up on a Tuesday and said, let me show it to you. And he's like, you built the whole thing. To be clear, technically, I spent about eight hours skinning the admin, which is not super easy. I hope that gets easier, but skinning the admin and then 20, 30 minutes writing some custom post types. It wasn't a lot of work. But I'm like, no, here, WordPress actually did all the work. I just made it look a little easier and a little better for you, but this is what you could be doing and this won't cost you $120,000. Over the course of the next several months, we spent about $30,000 building a custom plugin that would pull all the data out and serialize it, put it in the JSON and send it off to another engine that we built that would actually turn all of that data into a mobile app that would send it to the Apple store. And we built that up and he went out and sold it to three, then four, then 500 churches. 
And within six months, we had 300,000 API calls back to the server requesting those JSON files so that we could equip those phones. 300,000 people every month connecting to their churches and congregations using these mobile solutions that he had built. And a year later, he sold the company for several million dollars. He called me up and said, how much do I owe you? Like, what's your problem? I'm like, you don't owe me anything. You paid for the hours that we built the actual stuff. It's all yours. It's like, this is amazing. And he would get on stage to talk to churches and church organizations and nonprofit organizations. And he'd get on stage and he'd talk about it. And the last tail end of his message would always be, and we built this whole thing on WordPress. And half these people didn't know what WordPress was, but they're like, sounds awesome. <laughs> and so they come up to him regularly to tell them their idea. And he says the same thing every time. You know what? I don't know technology stuff. You got to talk to my friend Chris, except him and WordPress. Oh my God, we could totally do this. And so he calls me up to say, hey, found another person who has a dream. I believe that WordPress allows us to do far more than set up someone's blog. I believe that WordPress allows us to help people meet their objectives when their dreams are bigger than just money. I believe that WordPress allows us to satisfy people's hopes and dreams if you let it. The reality is the ecosystem is growing and it's growing bigger and bigger every day. It was 20% of the web and now it's 22% of the web and it's growing at the outside edges. There's tons of people that every day are hearing the word WordPress. You could test this out. You probably have shirts because you go to WordCamps, you go to a place, they give you shirts that has WordPress on it. And here's the difference. If you see the logo, there's a lot of people that will not ask you about the logo. But if you use the word WordPress on a t-shirt, watch the number of people that talk to you about it in the grocery store. Because it's happening all on the outside edges. The community is growing and it's growing quickly. But there's a challenge. Because those people who've never heard about WordPress at all, and they go and log in the first time, they got 45 choices, they're looking at the thing, they don't know what to do, and they're like, no, I'm not going to be able to do this. And the only people that are going to be able to help them get over that hump is you. It's not some guy on a stage. It's not some video. It's you. Because they're going to trust you. And because your barber, because your stylist, and because the person that helps clean your house or anything else, the people you interact with, because they have a dream and you have relationship, you can bring WordPress into that to help them if you want to. There was a point in my professional life where we thought that everything was gonna to move to Flash. 98% of the browsers on the planet had Flash already in place. In fact, I, I ran a small team at one of our startups that we built some of the very first technology that would take XML and convert it to Flash. We built an entire B2B exchange for the automotive industry. At the time, people would actually go to auto auctions and they would get in line to bid for off-lease vehicles. Like, you know, you lease a Ford and then you give the Ford back at the end of the time when you're done. And when you're done with the lease car, you give it back, except Ford Credit is a bank. They're not a car ownership. They don't want to keep the car, so they got to get rid of the car. So they actually put it in an auction in a special what was called dealer lane. And they'd put it in that dealer lane so that ultimately people who ran dealerships could take these off-lease Fords and buy them and put them on their lot. If you go to an auction today, the dealer lane is gone. We removed it by automating it and putting it online. But when we went to build that product, we found some technology that Adobe and Macromedia were just starting to come out with, which was this XML language that we could write XML, connecting it through uh, a lot of Java and, and EJB stuff on the back end. But we could build all that technology and then submit the XML to the browser, and the browser would automatically convert it to Flash. And so you had high interaction 
with people to do this drag and drop, put the car in my cart by dragging it. It was incredible. We were the first, one of the first five companies that had built anything with MXML. We got to go into the Adobe offices. And I remember going up in South of Market in San Francisco. It's a beautiful building, all brick facade, which in California, we don't have a lot because we have earthquakes. And so when you see this beautiful building, you walk into it and you're like, oh my God, look at this. And this was at a time when if someone had a 17 inch monitor, that was kind of a big deal. But when you walked up to the product manager in the area of all the flash developers, all of a sudden you saw everyone had two or three 17 inch monitors. And you're like, they have made it. <laughs> Oh, I want to be like them. And in that moment, you thought, Flash will be here forever. There was a time in my career before that when we thought all the kind of digital e-bonding, that's what we called it at the time, e-bonding, that all of e-commerce would be managed by something called Corba. You've likely never heard of Corba. If you have, I'm really sorry. <laughs> But we would fly to parts of the country and we would meet and go into these committee meetings and we would talk about this spec for Corba and it was way too complicated. But we were trying to build one technology that would allow computer to computer to computer to talk and you could send instructions back and forth and activate programs on different servers even though they were in different operating systems and using different technologies and it didn't matter because we could bond those computers and get them to call each other. And we thought this was going to be it. But the technology, the standard, the spec for Corbo was way too complicated. Someone showed up with XML and said, what about this? And XML over HTTP became a thing. Thousands of engineers that were working on Corbo suddenly didn't have a job. And the people that were working at the Adobe office with two and three 17 inch monitors eventually didn't have a job. Because the reality is that technology for the sake of technology, technology just improved for its own end and its own purpose, that kind of technology will end up disappearing, especially when it gets too complex. I don't know about you, but when I look at all the stuff we're doing with WordPress, I think this is incredible, but I know what happened to Corba, and I know what happened to Flash, and I know that it's possible to happen to WordPress when it gets too complicated and someone else shows up and says, check out this Squarespace, am I allowed to say Squarespace, Squarespace in this thing? They're about to pull me off stage, or Wix, right? Oh my God, but you just, you, you know, they had, one of them had a Super Bowl commercial. I don't remember which because I didn't care. I was like, wait, how much money did you spend to advertise a drag and drop GUI interface that doesn't do anything else except look pretty? And then I realized that's all people want sometimes is just to look pretty. And you realize what happened to Corbin, what happened to Flash could happen to WordPress. It's a scary thought. But the only thing that will stop it is if we keep WordPress easy. And the only way that we keep WordPress easy is if you get involved. I believe that you have the ability to build the trust with people, to teach them what they need to know to use WordPress. I also believe you have the wherewithal to invest in all of the forums to answer questions, to help people feel engaged. I also believe that you have the ability to actually get involved and contribute. There's a whole contribution day tomorrow where you can get involved and say, I would like to make this easier and you can make a difference. I believe that if we keep it easy and if we keep helping people find their dreams using WordPress, it could stay around for a long time, I believe that all that's possible if you get involved. Because if you don't, years from now, someone's going to be standing on the stage saying, I remember this one technology. I remember at one point where I thought WordPress was going to rule the world. We only have 22%. Think of the guys who were building Flash. They had 98% adoption rate in the browser. And then Apple's like, this is giving us a lot of hassle. Errors, support issues. Let's just ship stuff without flash support, and like that, things changed. I believe that you, you have the ability to make an incredible difference. And yet I also believe that it's likely that you think, not me, I can't do it. 
because you're often caught staring at your back end reel, right? Watching the behind the scenes video of your life while you watch the highlight reel of everybody else. And because you're caught in everybody else's highlight reel and you're watching that highlight reel and you're saying, no, but they could do it, but I probably couldn't do it. Because you know all the nuances of the things you don't know and you know all the fears you have and you know the places where you're stressed and you walk up into a room and you're like, I'm not a developer. Or I haven't been doing this very long. And you think, I have no way to contribute. It's not true. How many of you have been using WordPress for more than five days? Sweet, guess what? There's approximately 18,342 people who know less than you. No, sorry, it just got, yeah, no, it just got more. Every minute, there's new people who step into the community who know a lot less. There are people who are like, how do I get, how do I log in? Do you know that if you don't know slash login or slash WP admin, you could stare at the screen forever looking for a place to log in and you're like, I don't know how to get back into my website. How many of you know how to log in your website? Boom! You go to the support forums and you start answering those questions. I believe that you hold in your hand and in your time and with your resources every chance at helping people find and fulfill their dreams. I believe that sometimes we end up telling the wrong stories. I believe we get caught up talking about how to do something with a post type or how to do something with a menu or how to do something with some special function and we forget that the stories we should be telling aren't stories about functions. They're stories about people. They're stories about dreams. They're stories about how lives have been changed because of the technology. Technology for the sake of technology is empty, but technology for the sake of people's dreams is incredibly powerful. And you have that superpower because you know how to log in. I believe sometimes we get caught telling the wrong story. But you don't have to get caught there. You're on your own journey, but the reality is there's a lot of people. You get caught looking at the people in front of you and thinking, oh my gosh, they know so much more, but there's a lot of people behind you who need to hear your story. There's a lot of people behind you who need to understand how you can help them. And you can do it. That man with his leg caught in the train station, at the train, at the track. Thank God there was someone who's like, no, stop the train. All the people got off the train. And they all leaned against the train to push it, to tip it on its side so that he could get his leg out. And that business guy had to get out of the train. And you can see him there, standing there, so preoccupied, so focused on himself, until he realized, there's a guy there. This then he realizes there's a whole group of people that are going to help him. And then he's finally like, okay. And he put his hand on the train, and he got involved as well. I believe that the speed and the pace of your success is significantly impacted by the people you hang out with. Your performance, your success, is a function of the people you hang out with. And the WordPress community, bar none in technology, and I've been doing this for 20 years, is the single most giving group of people that I know. I'd wager any amount of money on it. And when you hang out with this group of people, you can't help but get caught by the bug of helping someone else. My challenge to you this morning is learn as much as you can while you're here. But don't think that this is the end goal. Don't think that your learning is the end goal. Don't think that technology for the sake of technology is the end goal. Your expertise in WordPress is not the end goal. Even your ability to generate more revenue and earn more money and ask me how to change my prices and get even better money is not the end goal. The end goal is how you can help other people. That guy finally got involved because the people around him were involved. And I hope that his life was changed because of it. I know your life will be. These are some of the things I believe. My name is Chris Lama. I blog every day over at chrislama.com. You can find me on Twitter at chrislama. But that's not what's important. 
What's important is what you believe. And your actions will speak louder than your words. Thank you.